Well, I think my beer mead making was such a success, I thought I'd have a crack at making actual just mead wine. I've got a little bit of that uh, honey residue sugar water there, so I've been flicking through me mead making Viking, no, hang on, making mead like a Viking book, which I quite enjoy. But I'm a little bit slack, because I mean, I'm, I don't know, he's got some really cool ideas in there about lighting a fire and getting some charcoal flavours in there, but we're a bit pressed for time because we're on to another project. So we're just in between, just finished having a bit of lunch and we thought, well, we'll just whip this little video in there for you because everybody was pretty keen to have a, have a beer with me. So now we can have a wine with me. So this recipe calls for a few citrus notes. Now back in my chefing days, I remember you don't want to put the white pith from your lemons and oranges in, in anything because the pith is horrible crap. Makes everything go bitter and muck. So I'm going to just cut the skins off, put them in. Hey, check this shit out. I bought my wife a new bowl. Now I'm going to actually put it to use in my own purpose, but still. I'm not as bad as you think. <laughs> I do look after the lovely woman. So he's a good girl. I don't know how she tolerates me, quite honest. We actually made it to the US TV. We were having on right this minute, which was kind of groovy, which is, I think, it, it, it's a show. Now, I have to be forgiven because I'm a crappy internet person myself. Even though you guys are watching me on the internet, I'm pretty ordinary. I don't really know what the hell's going on. But anyway, they take stuff that's on the internet and talk about it, and they even talked about us. So how cool is that? The Bush B-Man's on telly in America. woo <laughs> Thank you to all you subscribers and Patreon supporters that are making this shit happen. You never know where we'll end up. You're a bloody lot of champions, I reckon. Anyway, back, back to making me citrus here. I'm just going to take the skin off these lemons. Now, if you'd bought lemons from the shop, which the Vikings wouldn't have done, by the way, because they didn't have shops. Well, did they have shops? I don't know. They would have had some way to trade, wouldn't they? Later on in their system, they did. But early on, they didn't. I probably didn't even have lemons back in the day, but that's not the point. These lemons are from a tr my own little tree, so they haven't got any wax and crap on the skin. So if you've gone to the shop and bought a lemon, remember to wash all the wax and shit off, because otherwise it's not nice beeswax that you would want to have in your, in your drink. It'll do some other weird ass shit to you, so just remember that. Wash your wax off. Be like a little, what's that little kung fu dude? Wax on, wax off. You want your wax off. So I've got a couple of oranges as well. I think I'm going to put the lemon juice in, but I'm not going to put the orange juice in because I figure we're sweet enough. Now, if you're wondering, that orange is actually overripe because it's an old Valencia variety. And when they get past ripe, not past ripe, but anyway, ripe enough, they go green again. So how crazy is that? They go back, go backwards. It's a bit like me, I'm a bit backwards, but anyway. <laughs> If we were doing this peel for free to cook, the other show that we're on, well, I'm not on, which is more of a pity. <laughs> oh, maybe I could do a cameo roll on there. But anyway, if we were doing a bit of a free to cook thing and we wanted some less of orange, we'd have to go like this and get all motivated and take all that pith off, wouldn't we? And then you get all silly and you go, oh, that's all really lovely like, and you go, oh, we're going to make little strips. And then you can sprinkle that shit on your on your thing as a garnish or you can dip it in hot sugary wonder you could probably dip that crap in hot honey couldn't you and turn it into something but anyway we're not getting that fancy here we're just making a drink so let's not get too carried away just gonna squeeze this bit of lemon in here i don't know i reckon it'd be nice a bit of lemon juice in there bounce it up there's not that much lemon not just juice in these old lemons anyway it's the wrong time of year here they're sort of the mid we call them the off, off season lemons almost but that's all right, I'll have a bit of flavor. A bit of, put a bit of, bit of twang in there. Then we want a bit of um, raisins in. I'm gonna go out and get a bit of rosemary out of the herb garden and throw in here as well, I reckon. Maybe a bit of sage. Mm, sage might go nice, because sage, actually that would be probably better. Sage and honey go together nicely. I wonder if that'd go in the wine though, that'd be weird. Hey, I freaked myself out. I could go and read my bloody book and find out what I'm supposed to put in this crap. <laughs> We'll get the recipe because it says we're supposed to put some raisins in there, but I'm not sure if it was 20 or 12 or, or whatever. But it's more than two, I know that. So anyway, we'll just nip over and grab the book. Ah, yeah, gosh. I me like a Viking. Mead making in the Viking age. This is the little, this is the caption. Anyway, this dude's pretty cool. I like it. 
is I reckon it's approximately back around approximately 400 10 to 1066 the reason for this threefold thing anyway it's got this little quote here may abundance of mead be given to the malein of Ashen Anlesi Anlesi cool that's obviously some cool people that were in their mythology who supplies us with his foaming mead horns with choice pure liqueur so since his bees collect and do not enjoy we have sparkling mead which is universally praised cool sparkling mead we're only making flat mead so i don't know i guess i'll make sparkling mead with that beer didn't i that's i'll tell you what that shit's enjoying i'm enjoying that righty -o, let's see if we can find a recipe okay we've got basic mead recipes that must be where we're up to this is what i was looking for here we go we got Mead for a lazy or impatient Viking. I reckon that's me. I'm pretty lazy and impatient. So, or small mead, the basic small mead. And I'm not gonna be that excited, so it's 10. What do we want, barn yeast? We're gonna use some ale yeast or wine yeast, I think. We want 12 raisins and a black tea bag. Cool, so it would appear to me that we have to get a couple of tea bags, because this is only, what do we got? A four liter recipe. So we're gonna do 20 liters. But, you know, might as, well, <laughs> might as well make a decent effort. And so I reckon we'll put four tea bags for the tannin. It says here for the tannin. And we've got the lemon and the orange, which I remembered. And we need, it says here for four layers, we need 12 raisins. So for what we're doing, we're going to want 40, aren't we? 40 raisins? 10 to 12 for four? Sorry, Mr. Book Writer of the Mead thing. I'm not the best with recipes. But I'm enjoying your book though. <laughs> Don't email me and tell me I fucked this shit up too badly. <laughs> oh, three, four, five. Does it really matter, you reckon? Oh, I don't know. Oh, fucking eight, nine, ten. Oh, fucking, I don't know. Twenty, that'll do. Close enough. God, oh, and one for good luck. Hey, if you were in prison, if you were in prison, you could make, make alcohol just out of a bag of raisins, can't you? Or a bag of sultanas or some crap. I reckon they used to just put them in their socks. In a bucket or some crap. In, in a bucket. Toilet. In the toilet? In a sock in a toilet. Get out of town. It's nah. toilet wine. Toilet wine. Wow. Now, back to my point when I was making the beer. How fucked up are we humans, honestly? I'm not sure. I suppose if I was locked up in jail, I'd make, make some toilet wine. Any ex-criminals out there that happen to be watching our show, don't hesitate to text me and tell me what toilet wine tastes like, because I'm not going to make any. Not happening, but I wouldn't mind hearing from you as to how the toilet wine turned out. <laughs> well, that might be a bit weird in the edit. It's probably going to get edited, this bit, but anyway. I think we're going to want some intense Lipton tea bags, it says in here. Oh, God. The wife loves her green tea, but I don't think that's what you're looking for. I don't think we want green tea. I think we want... Oh, come on. Ow, oh, shit. I'm in the pantry, I'm making a mess. <laughs> we had to put all the shit in little boxes because the bloody mouse come in here and chewed. That was more annoying than me, I think. I think the wife was more pissed off with the mice than she was with me for once. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was ignored for a little while. Well, I reckon you'd want to put a little bit of water on the tea bags, even though they're gonna end up in the pot with some water. But we're going to have to get hot pot, hot water in the pot anyway. So we might as well put some hot water on the tea bags to make them start to release the tannins. Well, I don't know. Have you ever dipped the bloody tea bag in a cold cup and seen how that happens? Nothing happens. It just sits there and does, it, does nothing. I'm not sure whether the bloody Vikings had tea bags, though, did they? Sure. Come on. The dude that wrote this book, him and his brother, I think it says in here somewhere, they made this. They made a jolly bloody big. Viking brew house out of wooden shit. So that, I mean, that's pretty keen. Right, we'll just put that in there for a minute. Go. My very, my very unfortunate herb garden. Goodness gracious, I'll tell you what. I've got another bath around there with some herbs in it, but anyway, we'll snip a few sage heads off, I reckon. Well, this looks like nice ones here. If we were really motivated, I suppose we could put them in the oven and dry them out, but. They'll get wet again anyway, wouldn't they, when you stick them in the pot? So, that won't matter. 
It smells pretty. Mm. Woo! Hell! I will give it a bit of a kick. Where are we going to go? Some of this stuff? Well, I don't know, through here somewhere? Oh, I reckon honey and rosemary will go together, all right. Honey, rosemary, citrus. Yeah, hell. I reckon it's tasting all right already. Yep. So anyway, I reckon we're just gonna throw all that. Mm -hmm. Throw that in the pot. Get a bit of flavor happening. I'll throw that in there for now. I reckon we're gonna bring the tea bags in that. We've got the raisins, we've got the peel. We've got honey out in the other room. So we're going, I think it'll be easy. We'll tip that shit in that room and then we'll take it down the cellar so it can do its thing. Hey, by the way, I found my wine yeast after I didn't need it, so we're going to use it in this recipe. Look at that. I had it in the kitchen, in the bloody um, mortal and pestle. Mortal and pestle, there you go. <laughs> well, what the hell it was doing in the mortar and pestle, I don't know, but it was in there anyway. So, oh, I did have some, it just was in the wrong place. I'm not sure what sequence this is playing in, but if we're lucky, you've actually seen us do the wax through the hessian sack and in the saucepan and we melted it in the saucepan and this stuff here is i guess you'd call it the wash because it's the it's the basically the honey that was in that honeycomb that didn't run out and it was very quite sweet and i thought well this might be perfect this is almost what they um you know what our norwegian brothers would have used or i don't know i guess historic in there anyway anyway the historic mead making i thought this was just ideal now give it a crack so here we are oh, it smells like a bit of Dangerous crap in here. Got that off. Talking now, that's got that's got some sense. This is gonna be good. Tip out a little bit of extras in. See if we can't get a bit of extra flavour happening. Now I think the raisins are meant to help feed the yeast. I think that's what the go is. I don't know, but I guess. If you were making a ginger beer plant, you don't, then you actually feed that with a bit of sugar and a bit of raisins and, well, sultanas and ginger, and then you make the, make it happen that way. But I never did make alcoholic ginger beer. I used to make cool ginger beer when I was a kid, and that was pretty yum. So I guess it's just a natural progression, isn't it? You get old enough, and you sort of want a bit more punch in your ginger beer or honey mead or whatever it's making on. Cool. Anyway, the tea bags are going in. Right, here we go. Let's take this down to the place where it all happens. Arr. I don't know whether these stairs would be our right HS, but they are goodness gracious. Check out the wine barrel that I rolled down here though. That was a bit insane. That would have made a good video. Oh! Love it, hell lad. Now we're in trouble down here because we haven't even got I just remembered. We haven't technically got any cold water because the other day the wife had me in the garden and we were doing some bark around the garden and some big clumsy clap kicked the bloody fitting off that comes down to the cellar here and I haven't actually fixed it. So anyway, so if we need cold water, the cameraman's going to have to go and get some because he's young and fit. That's going to probably be just perfect. Actually. Keep an eye on the side. At least we'll have this documented so if this actually turns out any good, I'll know how much of whatever I put in there. Because as most times I make a lovely meal for dinner and the dear wife says, oh, that was beautiful, I want that again. And I go, well, I wish I could remember what I actually did. Hey, I doubt very much that I'm going to get a job with a, as a brewer, am I? Goodness me. You can just um, collect some wild yeast from out in the garden somewhere, or leave this pot out there, or have a little jug out there that you can catch some yeast, but the fact that we've got bloody bees everywhere, I don't think we're gonna catch nothing other than bee bums. So, I'm in a slap prick, and as I said earlier, I had the, had the wine yeast in my kitchen, so I'm gonna just chuck that in the barrel, 
And then we'll put the lid on and then, well, I guess you, next time you come back, we'll either be bottling or we'll be drinking. So we'll just give that a little stir and then we'll put the lid on and the little airlock and it shall be tickety-boo. Mm -mm. Almost taste that already, can't you? That's oh, gonna be brilliant. I wonder how long you're supposed to, I suppose you just can't leave it there until it stops bubbling. That's what I normally do when I'm brewing. Pop our lid on. So obviously I've said that before, this is just your airlock, so the, it's called a sealed fermentation. So you can't get any wrong yeasts in there. But if you weren't, if you were fuss arsing about and you were just making it in the wild and you didn't want to, you can have an open yeast brew and it will just brew up and do its thing. The only trouble with that is, then you get the bad taste, which is, you know, like, I don't know, that feral blooming yeast makes it go wicked, makes it go all horrible tasting. Hence the way they used to put stupid shit in wine and beer and stuff to, so they could actually drink it. We'll let that sit down here for a week, or maybe two weeks, I don't know, depends on how it goes on. And then I'll back to the moment. Hey, the upside of this little project is, I've got to collect wine bottles to put this jolly wine in, so that's a bit of a shame, you know, I have to drink a little bit extra during the week.